Hey everyone, we're back for another episode of Our Damaged. Today we're joined by two Endicott Guidos. I <laughs> <laughs> can't believe you guys bought chains just for this. I'm why not? Just for this? I'm wearing this every day now. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Wait, now. I can't wait to go. You. I can't wait to go get a whole I'm bunch of you, them. I gotta go get my fucking vest and just stop wearing t-shirts, just rocking chains and Gold a vest. chains and vest. Get a nice yeah. I feel like jumpsuit. you're gonna look even more like you stole some kids. Lunch when you come in with one of those pouches. <laughs> if you just go straight vest, no shirt, chain, <laughs> and then just eating fruity pouches. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go Mr. T with it and just get like thirteen hundred chains. Get my chains. Vitamins. Just, I don't want to have a neck anymore. I just want chains. Do it. Just. That sounds cool. healthy. No, no neck, just chains. <laughs> That'll be my name. Hey, no talking to the mic. All right, all the chains. <laughs> that sounds like a rap name, right? All chains. Instead all, of two chains. All chains, all no chains. neck. All right, well, speaking of wearable things, we had these awesome T-shirts that Upstate <gasps> Merch made for us. We can't see it. Which I'm it. about the only fucking one here that bought one for some reason. I got one. Yeah, Reggie's got one. I have terrible memory. I apologize. But anyway, Zach, we'd like to present you with a check from Renaissance Studios for $250. Oh, wow. For our yeah. T-shirt sales. Awesome. So Thank you so much. Hey, can. This our pleasure. Means, this is awesome. Thank you, guys. Hey, we You're appreciate welcome. you. You know how excited he is to go buy more gold chains? It's only gold. It's like, I'm going to be in here walking in here with another... <laughs> hey, we just bribed you so AV people get to do whatever we want in early October. No. <laughs> We're going to be wearing so many chains. Implications, Zach. Impl- Impl- the implications. implications. All right. Uh, so what are we talking about today, Zach? Uh, AV people. We are talking about Saul Bass. Bass? Bass? Bass. 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 Saul Bass. Bass. Okay. Bass. Saul like the fish. Bass. Yes. Okay. All I was going to say something really fucked up. Face. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> uh, Saul Bass. The, the Jewish man from the Bronx. Okay. Turned that Hollywood movie star. narrow it down. There's a lot of Jewish men in the Bronx. Take it. Uh, turned Hollywood uh, movie graphics this, artist. This whole thing's been very non You got a date for so when he was born? Love. Yep. Saul Bass was born in 1920. <laughs> well, hey, before we get to all that, let's go around and do our social media. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold up. Okay. Get out of hand. Get ahead of ourselves. First chug. I'm Josh Ruff at joshruff.com and all the things. www.joshruff.com. We're here at Renaissance Studios at RS Tattoo and Y on Instagram. Hi, everyone. At Reggie Inks. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. I say Twitter, but I'm not really on there. But you can like my shit. Make me feel popular because I want to be popular. And give him a dollar for a dollar. Yeah, for one dollar a a month, you can pay to give me a dollar. To buy more gold chains. <laughs> Two chains. I need a second one. I'm done. Sorry. That was <laughs> I ruined it. Uh, Zach Pedley, owner of the North Brewery. Uh, you can find us at North Brewery on Facebook or Instagram, or you can find me alone at I Like My Beer Ratchets or on TikTok, Chomp88. The first eight is an, spelled out eight, and then the last eight is a number. A-T-E? A-T-E. Glad we finally got to the bottom of that. Go ahead. Eight spelled like you're eating something or the number? E-I-G-H-T. Okay. Oh. I'm Christina Masler. You can find me on Instagram at Christina underscore Masler. That's I never look myself up. Uh, Christina Masler on Facebook. Christina Masler here. Sometimes at home. Crucible. I'm Bam Masler. I'm a painter. Uh, good news. BamBurnsThings.com is back. Nice. Good. Nice one, nice one brav. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go subscribe to something. Man, we nailed right, these cool. fucking title cards yeah. today. I feel what like... What a fucking shit show that was. <laughs> <laughs> think, All right, moving on. <laughs> you'd think after like 132 episodes, we'd have this correct. Well, probably not. Well, hi, welcome to the Mad Doink Cheese Off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what? so... The Warthog. Saul... Bass. 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 Saul Bass. Bass. Saul Largemouth Bass. Uh, born in 1920. He was, he was fucking born. born. Okay, we got to cool. drink again. Because he was born a second time. Like religiously or just? Okay. Uh, born in 1920. He's a Jewish man from the Bronx. 
I uh, studied at the Artist Student League in Manhattan. Okay, so he's a fine art guy. He's a fine art guy. Cool. Uh, he ended up doing in a career of graphic design. Most of his work is all graphic design. He ended up doing some storyboards that he hand draw that he hand drawn. Mm-hmm. Um, he worked, and then w- he moved out to Hollywood in the 1940s, where he okay. ended up working in Hollywood for a lot of big, big name guys. Oh, yeah. it says here Alfred Hitchcock, Otto Preminger. I don't know that guy. Stanley, Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick and Martin Scorsese. Oh, oh yeah. Scorsese. Saul Bass was a minimalist artist. He tried to focus on as little as he can on the canvas or the the subject to get his point across, and we're going to see that in a lot of his works. Uh, he also did when like talked about the storyboards on a lot of movies. We'll talk about he was uh, he did a couple of storyboards for the movie Psycho, and we'll get into that okay. after we look at his art. Uh, his most iconic piece, some would say, is the Bell, AT AT and T Bell Systems. Oh, that's right. He did. Oh. Uh, he did a lot of logo design oh. for. Yes. Uh, so after stuff, Hollywood, right? he did some corporate stuff. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, he went corporate. Yeah. Like that. He did. Did uh, he was do that, that or was that the original that, uh, Bell that, Atlantic? Bell? No, no. The, the, that's the that's the original one. Now the one that he did. Bell um, System logo. Yeah, you got it right, right there. Right here. Yeah. Uh, should you if you oh, click that's on good, it? That's just going to take us to the Bell System thing. Okay. AT and T's Globe logo in '83. Yeah, the other one is a bell. We'll probably come across it when we go through his art. Yeah, yeah, it was like uh, a single line. To, so it's the outline of the overall bell. Another one. I know. On somewhere. Let's go back up and take a look at his sweet signature. Oh yeah, let's do that. A fish. <laughs> it's got a bass <laughs> on there. <laughs> All right. Nice. I guess I we, like this guy. I guess we figured out his last name pronunciation <laughs> is yeah. bass. It is a bass. You think he put it there because so many people called him Saul Bass or something? Probably. Probably. <laughs> but look at that little fish. Has a little mustache on it. Yeah, How great. cool is that? Little portrait face. of him. A portrait of himself. Kind of uh, looks like Groucho Marx. Man. <laughs> That's a fish. That's a good signature. Yeah. I'll give him that. All right. All right. Well, I hope that we, we get through his art and you guys like his stuff. Uh, another one of his famous pieces is The Man with the Golden Arm. It's for a movie about heroin. Right, uh, oh, shit. Yeah. So let's let's. Well, go the, this first one is, there's, there are no particular ones. Yeah. So what do you so, know about this one? Uh, it's for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know about it. Was it a good movie? Uh, I did not see this movie, so I can't state anything about it. But I'm guessing cool. by, how, by the art on this, it's about a murder, <laughs> about a guy being the dismembered. of a murder. Mm-hmm. Only cut up one leg. Well, let's talk about this while we have it up. What do you guys think of it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've seen my art. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to his in graphic design terms. Right. I try to get everything across. Like a lot of your beer labels and stuff. Yes. A lot of of it is. Well, nothing that we have in here today, but a lot of it is. I mean, Wolves is like that. Yeah. You know. I feel like it's very 1950s, 60s, like the opposite of the kitschy... As many characters as you can fit on yeah. a poster. Yeah, right. It was this, just but, very minimalistic. I got to say, I kind of like it. <clears throat> but we come yeah. we come back to this type of art with movies later on. A lot of people start mimicking a lot of his work mm-hmm. with movies. I believe it was um, uh, Lucky Number 11 or oh, yeah. no, okay. um, the one with uh, George Clooney, and he's building the dildo machine in his basement. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, uh, gosh. What's the name? Burn After Eating? Yes. yes. After eating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eating. Okay, yeah. So it's like typography kind of stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> we've come back full circle with a couple of the films that have come out uh, like this. I was going to so, say Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's second. Eleven is the same, yeah. A movie back in the day called Curdled, and it looked very similar to this. It was about the crime scene cleanup lady. I mean, and like if, when we're going through this, look at it from this point point of view. I mean, this is, this is an artist that has... Got a vote. He like he, he got a job from doing this type of stuff, you know. Nothing crazy, ludicrous like mm-hmm. Andy Warhol or shit. But it still gets the point across. Yeah, yeah. I like the simplicity of it. I gotta say, like and it's pretty direct. You know, like the high leave, contrast. It doesn't like spell out the whole fucking movie plot like on yeah. a poster. You know, yeah. quick cut out paper or something at the time. And yeah. yeah, the letters being cut out of the body is yeah. a really cool negative space stuff going on. Yeah, right. And he was doing this back then with just paper. That's what I mean, yeah. yeah. It, looks, it looks just like straight cut paper. Yeah. Now you have your whole, uh, what do you use? Yeah, Illustrator. Illustrator. Illustrator does all of this. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to use cardboard, I mean, um, construction paper to do it. I feel like it would make it even better if you did. Go, go old I c- school. I could it. do old school one time. 
It's a nightmare. Whack, when I, you had to do this at graphic design school, too. It's a nightmare. It's horrible. <laughs> What's it called? There's, a, a, there's a, a term for it, right? Uh, it completely escapes me right now. I, I, I know I know it. Yeah, I can't think of what it is. Not quite collage. The guy that Kinda I had like was a real dickhead at, at montage, Binghamton University. Something like that. Everything had to be used cut exactly to the point. You had to make sure that the like it looked flat when you took the photo of it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, I remember that. Shape lesson in design 2D. Yeah. Ooh, Here's cool. another one. Another, I haven't nice. seen this movie, the but it's another auto film. Factor. The human factor. We I mean, assume it's good. It has to be. It's all bass. And the same guy made it. Yeah. Otto. Preminger. Yeah. I mean... I don't think a guy named so. Otto would do anything bad. Starring Richard Attenborough. Uh, you know that guy. Doesn't he... Uh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> a Graham Greene. <laughs> I don't know saying? what you're saying to me. <laughs> you're looking at me like... It's like, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, so human It's not factor. a very minimalist thing, but, you know. It gets the point across. It's a movie. But you could also put this in your house. Like, all of his work, you would, you could put the... Like his his movie posters and put up in your house and like walk by and look at it. Yeah, I suppose. You, you suppose. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. But. All right. I feel like the simplistic ones make it look more unnerving for those thrillers. You know. So yeah, because uh, like it leaves a lot more to the imagination. I think. So is this what you have hanging in your house? Um, I don't have a lot of art hanging in my house. It's a lot of like uh, Thomas Kincaid shit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, God. I'm kidding. Bam, I have hey, your... I did find those at Home Goods. <laughs> giant, giant Thomas Kincaid triptychs, and they were like 120 oh bucks. You know, a lot of... Oh, uh, what, what were you saying? You have what? Nothing. I've had your stuff in my house. I have a lot of different art you, up. And, you don't have one of mine in, my, in your no, house? No, it's at the brewery right now, but it yeah, used to we, be in the bathroom. You found it under the bar. It used well, to because be I didn't bathroom. bring it home. I didn't bring it home. It dropped from in the bathroom. It dropped on the floor. It shattered. I brought it back. You fixed it, and I just got lazy and didn't bring it home. Yeah, you left it under the bar. We finally went and hung it up. Where did we hang it up again? Next to the crawler machine. Oh, yeah. It's good there. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's good there. <laughs> People can see it. All right. I see where you're getting at, though. In the like this one, vertigo. Well, I see the um, this one gives me vertigo just looking at it. Yeah, yeah. There was that guy that did like the black cat in a wine bottle during the oh, art the, nouveau. The noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the chat noir. Yeah. I mean, you could That's kind of posters in like a lot of Becky's houses. Sorry, yeah. Becky, but I don't know how else to say that. Right next to like a live, laugh, love plaque. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. probably like a Le chat noir. <laughs> Or like you know, but yeah. There's did, a very yeah, good posters like poster this for like, like old Audrey did, Hepburn movies and shit like that. Breakfast at did, Tiffany's. Did we yeah, see that yeah. one in Philly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, you would probably want. I don't know. I mean, like Chad, our friend Chad, he would like the words on the top. I probably wouldn't want the words. I'd want it to be really clean and just have the movie title. I wouldn't want the James Stewart and Kim Novak. But there's Alpha Chitchcock. But sometimes they got contracts with um, movie stars about having to their name their on ego, it. Absolutely, you know what I mean. Required. But this is not something you guys all look at and hate. You're like, okay, no, no, I can see cool. this. Yeah, I like it. It serves its purpose. Yeah, you know. And he's it's, found a vocation for for him. I mean, there's an art to simplicity for sure. Like uh, getting too crazy with it, um, things get out of hand. Like it's hard to keep it simple sometimes. And right, just be effective. Well, this is on two different extremes. You know, we were talking about abstract art, and now we have this. Yeah, and it's like, well, this is super clean, it's right on the cusp of being abstract. See, well, I, I hate it. abstract art. Well, it's art, super but. simplified, so it kind of like, well, the anatomy of a guy. It's not yeah. like his fingers were super rendered. No. it's almost like an. It's abstract still representational, though. Yeah. You know, so it's not super abstract. You rearrange a, any of those pieces, though, and it would be completely abstract. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's like this is. It's not meant to be appreciated for technical skill either. It's no. like. Uh, to grab your attention for this thing that's well, going on, this movie here. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about skill well, skill at all. But we are a little bit at him doing this in an age where there's no no computers to do this yeah, type of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he at least knows how to get the point across of a movie. I mean, it looks like he used a spirograph on this one. They had a spirograph back then, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> they had Rose Art kits, right? <laughs> Fucking uh, Rose Art. <laughs> And I like the hand-drawn quality of the lettering. You know what I mean? The inconsistencies of it, like, lead into the idea that it could be a horror movie or, yeah. Yeah. you know, a detective flick or whatever. But, yeah, it but, leaves some, but it's, something it's to the It's the right amount of inconsistencies where it doesn't look forced. Yeah, you know how yeah. some dudes will sit there and write it, like, 1,800 times just to make it look trashy? But mm. back then, at, th- at this time, 
he was the hottest thing going for movie studios. They're like, get all movie bass. posters, movie posters for doing this type of shit. And we haven't, you know, in his storyboards alone too. I mean, they like the, look at this for The Shining. It's a huge fucking. I think uh, his movie. original design was rejected though because it was yeah. red. It was yeah. the same thing, but just red, yeah, just a yellow. Red. This is great too. It is good. Yeah, it's exactly iconic it movie poster, for sure. Is that a photocopied face? Yeah, because it's photocopied. Shining was eighty on the money. Yeah. yeah, so this is a little bit later in his career. Yeah, so he probably had more tools. Could have put his, been a creep and put his face right in a photocopier, uh. and then like <laughs> copy the copy a bunch of times so it gets all grainy. Yeah. He shouldn't copy his butt. That would have been sweet. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe that's what his ass looks like. He did that for the half. He's got a face on his ass. That's true. <laughs> Fucking Voldemort. So, I mean, I like it. No, there's nothing that he's done that I'm like, man, this is, I hate this. Well, that's a pretty, you know, if you think about that, that's a really long time period. Because you said he moved out there in the 40s. Yeah. That's all. He was doing this up until the 90s, and he died in 96. <gasps> yeah, that was all wow. noir flicks, like all those he was born in high contrast yeah. black and white Man, movies. Drink, he so died. he was just working. He, he mentioned him dying. We're sure we're going to come back to it and yeah. shotgun again to it, but. Cool. So any uh, interesting, weird stories about the guy? Well, not really, but there is one. Okay. It's about the movie Psycho. Well, I think we got some more uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. before we get to that. Oh, West Side um, Story. Okay. Classic. Nice. Classic, yeah. right? I think I have a t-shirt with that on there. You do? Mm-hmm. That's yeah, why I really like how he gets away with using typography mm-hmm. as his main source of art. Well, I think that was his thing, right? Like, yeah. he kind of pioneered that, if you will. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's great. He really knew his fucking type typefaces and his fonts. Yeah, there's an art to that for sure. And then he's he's obviously manipulating, especially the, doing it without computers. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's manipulating the way the letters even look too. I mean, that S and that O are lowercase in this thing, and the T has been moved over. He gets it. Do you have a time period on this one? I uh, do not. I, I not totally. Well, no. Is not there to- a date on the? Book there's got to be. The, the, yeah, there. there's... Super small. So Probably small. 60s They're or small. 70s. Yeah. 60s. Well, I like the little bit of texture into the letters also. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shows a little, you know, like the, it's been eroded. Imperfections a little bit. Yeah. A little trashy. A little trashy. Who invented the, the printing press? Was that Gutenberg? Johannes. Johannes. Not Steve. Not Steve. Not I was Steve actually say, thinking Steve <laughs> Gutenberg. <laughs> Three men and a little lady. We did talk about that guy at one point, right? Because that was on the Durr episode, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Christina yeah. talked about in college. What did you do? Oh, that was supposed to be a bonus question. I couldn't think of Johannes. So it was like, uh, same name as that guy from Three Men and a Little Lady, except the Steve was not there. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 the gooch. You, you know. wrote all of that. <laughs> like a paragraph. Word. We, um, uh, I ended up, was really lucky. There's a guy in, uh, Shenango Bridge, who has an old printing press mm-hmm. from like the, uh, I don't know, I don't even know the time period. I'm not going to date it, and I don't, I'm not going to say something stupid. But he has an old printing press, and we got to look at it, and it's like all the little intricate fucking letters that you would have to place on a block that you would have to press oh, down. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's absurd. Yeah, it's like press. holy shit. Now we have a computer that does all. Yeah, of it. I mean that's just how it was done. That's terrible. I would not <laughs> want to do. You have that. to do it backwards. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think oh, I fucked up this letter. I think you need to do get a press and um, bam. There's do, a, do at uh, least one label by hand. All doesn't by that hand. make you guys appreciate like being alive at this point in time? It kind of makes me feel not like yet, I'm useless as an adult. Not yet, like, probably we five done year olds it. were doing this, you know. It doesn't. It makes me feel worse because I'm like we're standing on the shoulders of giants, and all of these guys back then were doing things. A really hard way and at getting that. And what did we do? TikTok. Yeah. We did TikTok. <laughs> Wait, no, it's true. And they probably are doing it faster by hand than we either of us can do on the computer. Uh, absolutely. Probably. They're like, oh yeah, go into that drawer and there's like an E in the very back of that drawer and that's yeah, what's. Oh, yeah. you, but like it's, it's, it's my favorite that, E. It's my favorite <laughs> E. You have to pick that E. It's it's size thirty six <laughs> times New Roman. It's a good E. <laughs> <laughs> it's that it's that crazy like. Uh, there's a story. It's like hard times make hard men. Hard men make soft times. Soft times make soft men. And then soft men make hard times. And I feel like we're in that. The cycle repeats. Itself. Yeah, we're in that really cusp right now because we have all this technology for art and all this stuff that we're doing. And then it's like 
this is this is nothing. It's, we're it's we're slapping out something. It's gonna go bad real soon. It is. Yeah. Like we're I slapping out right. shit that's like holy shit. Like Saul Bass or any of the artists that we talked about. We look at the stuff we're doing. I'm like, it took you. It took you twelve hours to do that. It just took you twelve hours. This took me four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then when you're talking to the printing press guys. They're like, we had to put out a new new page every week because the king decreed it, and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> We, and, and the king wanted that little insignia on the top. You know how hard that insignia is? Like, they would fucking flip the shit. They would flip the table. Yeah, if those guys were, like, suddenly alive, seeing what's going on, they'd be like, what the fuck happened? They'd be like, let <laughs> me die. Let me die all over again. Or, or they would take the technology we have, and within six months after we taught them, they would be doing things that we never thought we could possibly do. Right. They Probably. would be like, oh, yeah. if you have this tool, you should be, you should be still working as hard as we were. Because we're just too fucking lazy. And they're like, you know, you show them, like, Illustrator, and they're like, wait, how do I get more fonts like if since it's not a press and I don't have to carve it out of metal it's like oh you just go into this website called the font <laughs> and then like you could download some and then you could do more stuff you that you like use it <laughs> that's so funny somehow they make TikTok just productive they, no they would they turn TikTok into a time machine and bring back Da Vinci yeah Gutenberg would be like we, we, I, well oh, they would probably not. <laughs> TikTok time machine say did, did we just come up with a new art damaged movie <laughs> TikTok time machine <laughs> TikTok I feel like this is a Bill <laughs> a Bill and Ted spin off oh you do my a really god stupid dance Honestly, and then you go back in time okay sidebar that was an episode of the tick where somebody uses a time machine to get all the most profound inventors and artists <laughs> so they start getting like fucking Da Vinci and they get Oog the guy that invented a wheel you know what I mean he's like I'm gonna go back in time and I'm gonna be the best inventor ever it's like, God damn it, keep all that stuff away from Da Vinci. He'll make a flying machine out of anything. <laughs> and then he escapes on like a napkin and a pencil, you know? <laughs> okay, back to it. All right. Yeah. That's good. That was, that was a good little uh, uh, tangent there. Spartacus. Spartacus. Cool. Also, really good. Gets That's the point a across. That's 70s movie, right? 60s, 70s. Uh, earlier. I think that was in the 50s. Several people died. Spartacus, I think several people died in the making of the film. No shit. Damn. I feel like that's just a normal thing back then. They were just like, yep, it happens. Yeah, they were run yeah, over by chariots. The guys fell off the back of the people. They fell off the back of the chariots. You yeah. see, if you watch the movie, you see them die in the movie. One of my favorite things that that's they rough. just kind of glaze over is in the Omen. You know when they're going through like the the drive through zoo thing and oh, yeah. the baboons start freaking out. <laughs> the reason is because they took their their like main head baboon and sedated him and put him in the back of the car, so they'd start freaking out. Meanwhile, that wakes up sedated baboon and he starts pulling on the lady's hair. So that freak out <laughs> is her getting attacked by a baboon while baboons are descending on the car. And the director's like, keep going. This is great. It's great. <laughs> it's great. She's, she's losing her hair. She might get her neck snapped. It's Wasn't great. there a bunch of weird shit that happened on the set of that movie, though? Yeah. 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 That one is Anytime there's like favorite. a movie where you talk about Satan. Your Satan spawn. Some yep. weird shit happens. Yeah. Or maybe people just like think because they're working on that. It's like, cursed. Yeah. They just think it. No, the exorcist, they like, do you know when she's in that MRI machine and it's making the weird noises and there's yeah. a guy pressing the buttons? Mm -hmm. The guy pressing the buttons, they found out during that time frame, he was just murdering people. He was responsible for a bunch of leather man like in the Holy village, shit. murders, and it spanned from before that time to after that time. And they just used him as an extra because he actually worked in the hospital taking MRIs. Jesus. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking metal exorcist. Fucking leatherhead. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All the freaks come out of the woodwork for those movies. They do. <laughs> hey. Jeez. All right, so what else we got here? All right, Schindler's List. Oh, yeah. This was rejected. Like, Yeah, this isn't the poster that they ended up using. Why? It's sweet. I can't think of Schindler's List without thinking of fucking Louis C.K. talking about Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Jews! It's <laughs> <laughs> a great bit. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and we just got banned again. No, it was like the whole bit's like about how did they cast a little girl to yeah. scream goodbye Jews at the just Jews? A room full of little girls yeah. having to say that. It's fucking hilarious. I'm just saying the podcast gets canceled yet again. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, all right. So that Can't cancel authentic. We're authentically stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. I mean, the technique's nice. I like how the thorns It's pretty look. close to what they ended up using, though. Like, what they ended up using was like that, like a... Uh, it just looked like a photoshopped thing of 
Didn't, I thought like it was a hand. hand. It was yeah, a hand like holding a hand the papers. Yeah. yeah, something like that. You got your papers. Yeah. Well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, I, I like how simple and effective all this stuff is, and it's, like, instantly recognizable. Yeah, because there's no need to do anything more. If it works, the one tool works, why mm-hmm. why change it? Okay. All right, so cool. this is the Hitchcock thing. So th- the about. theory, there's a, there's a theory out there that Alfred Hitchcock did not actually direct that famous shower scene. Which is, like, one of the most iconic scenes in all of, like, horror cinema. That yeah, is, that's is what this, this video is alleging. This, right? is, this is the drama. This is I wouldn't say drama, but Alfred Hitchcock just goes to his grave saying, "I directed it. Nobody else did. I did it." But then it came out a little. Came out years later. This was the storyboard about how it should go down. And D- Alfred Hitchcock was right. He directed it, but who came up with the actual scene and how it's supposed to go down? And a lot of people are saying it was Saul Bass. Well, let's just watch this and see. Uh, yeah, how it goes here. So there she is. She's getting in the shower. Naked lady. That's the. This is like fifty one, like yeah. right on the fifty mark, right? So, I mean, in the storyboards for movies back then, I mean, they were the you you followed it to a T. You're the one who wrote it. This is you, Saul Bass would r- have written this. So she's in the shower, and you're gonna get to the part, the good part. Really good. Uh, uh, it's pretty on point. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really, really good. Um, I mean, the guy knows how to draw. You know what I mean? Even though yeah. he's quick, yeah. very simple, but very. Good See, and he's got the person in the back, oh, yeah. and then the person's peering through with the hand. Oh, got gotcha, you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's shot. The it's directed shot for shot of how he did the story, even down to like when he did the lips of how yeah. she was screaming. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like the only thing he left out was his face when they first pull open the curtain, you know? No, I think they had him in there. He was in there. Well, they it was like, it was shaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't in full silhouette, yeah. but. This scene That's pretty traumatized good. me as a kid. Did it? Yeah, I'd be like, in the shower, ripping up, open a curtain, and I was going to catch someone. Really? Like if I <laughs> caught them, they were just going to be like, oh, you caught me. I won't stab you now. <laughs> You know that a lot because of this movie. There Red a lot light, of, green light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, a lot of a lot of showers one. were. Close. It was pretty close. A lot of showers changed over from curtain to sliding door so people could see. That's crazy. I, I'm lying. I have no idea. Uh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I was wondering. Holy why, shit! I was wondering why people had those stupid glass uh, doors <laughs> all the but way like, down to like it all. It goes all the way stuff. down. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean. I mean, they basically followed the storyboards, like, right. the whole Yeah, the, the whole swirling. Scene. Fucking swirling. Yeah. The blood. Yeah. yeah. Swirling. I mean, you could, you might be able to be like, oh, no, you know, they're just following storyboards. But they oh, even followed the swirling. Right the eye. The yeah, eye. To this. Joke's on all of Slowly. us. He drew this after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. This will show him. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Hitchcock. I totally would have made a great poster for the birds. <laughs> it's a great movie. I should draw it. Was the birds before or after Psycho? I think after. Probably a higher budget for all like the crazy birds flipping around. And look at that that the long pan. Yeah, the slow pan outward. It's pretty good. I think it was 127 times. They shot it. They filmed yeah, it. Oh, oh, fuck. Man. There's like a fucking movie just about how many times he shot that. And surprisingly, he didn't break her like fucking Kruber. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Kubrick dead. She, poor little Shelly Duvall. <laughs> I know. She's not the same person anymore. I like that when... Yeah, when, that's, that's pretty much her now. When directors do that to the cast members. Just really push them over the edge. <laughs> Scare the shit out of them. Shelly Duvall is just like a shell of a person now, and I'm convinced oh. it's because of Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't just, really see her on many things after that. Oh, yeah, no, I, like, I, they, she does <laughs> interviews now, and she's just gone. She's like... Yeah. I saw a post on Facebook earlier, one of those stupid things, like uh, 15 interactions with celebrities in public. Right. And the, the top one was a uh, woman was in an airport, and Shelley Duvall just walked up to her and was like, your daughter looks like a princess. And then just walked away. Like a fucking crazy person. <laughs> I was just like, yes. that sounds about right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he turned her into a crazy that person. That sounds about right. All right, so that was the... That was Saul Bass. I didn't want to go on anything more. He would, didn't really was that... 
didn't have that much drama or anything. He was married. Didn't steal the Mona Lisa. No, but he's a, he was married twice. Yeah, he was married he twice. Divorce. But he's a little slice of Americana, you know? All right, well, let's check out uh, we own the it. AT&T thing. Oh, yeah, let's go to you know, uh, the just, just Google um, design stuff. Google AT&T. Oh, there it is. Uh, no, that's not the main. Yeah, I don't know if it's that. That's the, that one. No, 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 it's not the that. That's the, no, that's the, that was before he was born. The breakup. All right, well. Just Google, just Google Saul Bass AT&T. No, Saul Bass Bell. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking that's great. Back yep. in the day when they had Bell Atlantic and, um. Darth Vader was the narrator for In clean up. <laughs> yeah, fucking James <laughs> yeah. Earl Jones. I remember that shit. Yeah. In, and in Kleenex? In Kleenex? Oh, yeah, so he did, like, a lot of logo design, too. Yeah. Which is where I got a lot of my shit, too, from. Just Probably to got a bit of fucking cheddar. Oh, uh, he did. Taking on some Hollywood contracts. And uh, one of them I don't... Uh, one of Boys them I and believe. Girls Clubs of America, Continental Airlines, oh, man. Frontier Airlines. Quaker Oats. Yeah, lots of things. Dude, he was killing it in the 60s. It feels like everybody was kind of... You need riff, the logo. Riff Airlines. Like two scoops. Well, and also... Two scoops. And like also... The two hands look like, you know, the bell. Yeah, also, yeah. too, <laughs> back then... Graphic designers were in need. Like you needed, if you're a company, like we got to pay somebody to do this. It wasn't ever like, oh, I have a nephew that can do that. They have a computer. Yeah, they got a computer. Why do I need to pay a graphic design for that? Yeah, they know what they're doing. That's what it is. And well, it kind of shows. That's the man with the golden arm. Yeah, Sinatra. Sweet. Yeah, little heroin. Frankie Sinatra. Sinatra. Another another film by Otto. Yeah. Otto's the man. There's a lot of uh, like photo montage stuff in this one. It's cool. You like that? It's uh, interesting. It's different from his other ones. Yeah. He did a look like he. This guy was getting paid. Look in the '90s, he was still doing. Look, so he did uh, The Shining. He did The River Kwai and Schindler's List in the '90s. The Double MacGuffin. <laughs> the double McCuffin. <laughs> Click on it. We got to see what that thing Fuck is. Yeah. Oh, dude. I mean, that's a pretty sweet poster. Uh, yeah. <laughs> NFL stars Ed Too Tall Jones. <laughs> and Lyle has a <laughs> now I got to watch this. The son of Do you a think he's actually singer. too tall? Or Opening is narration like is provided by things. Orson Welles. <laughs> what is this movie? This movie? <laughs> Let's look at the poster up close. That looks. I mean, this awesome. looks like some weird '70s shit. The oh, double MacGuffin. Oh, I can't oh, stop yeah, about tiny. getting away with me. Soul <laughs> yeah. base, man. Soul base. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I fucking drink. Funny. I drink to that. Soul base. A shot for soul base. Separate from a shot for Saul Bass. Yeah, this dude got fucking paid. Yeah, he did a lot of uh, um, pretty recognizable logos, logos and posters. And it, was it sounds a- like he did a bunch of that shit for those companies after they took off. So he probably did get some money. You know, yeah. like AT and T. Do you imagine the profit margin? He's buying one pack of construction paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, it's it's the, the forties. It cost him like eight cents. <laughs> You think he died the he like cuts, paper? He cuts it on the fucking plastic or the cardboard box that the paper <laughs> cut in. He doesn't even have like a cutting mat at home. No. And then he's just like, sitting at his kitchen table. Oh, there's some and stuff then afterwards he's like, the, jokes uh, on you. I just reused yeah. letters. This yeah. is about the, the controversy because he was a pictorial consultant. Pictorial consultant. <laughs> I've never seen that job title before. I want that job title. Base is credited as a pictorial consultant. Interesting. Uh, Bass. <laughs> fucking base <laughs> shit. It's interesting, and that's where the, the thing comes from, this theory, because the fuck is a pictorial consultant? I mean, if he was there on the set while he was filming, it was sounds like, no, like, no, it needs to be like this, and you want the camera to come back. Yeah, it sounds like a storyboard artist with a producer credit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's you what, know what it sounds mean? like, yeah. He created 48 storyboard panels for that one scene. Damn. It's crazy. His greatest. Oh yeah, work. and that one only went through like every camera change. So 
Bass introduced the idea of using a montage of fast cuts and tight framing to render a violent, bloody murder as an impressionistic and nearly bloodless one. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so like the lot of scene changes in yeah, like there wasn't really like short yeah you don't, you don't see a lot of blood like yeah, if that yeah. was made today that scene like it would be like a rob it'd probably be two everywhere. shops yeah. like one blood one hand knife and then the shower there'd be excessive blood amounts of blood on it any and movie that like came out today like that would just there'd be spatter everywhere yeah. rob zombie yeah. would 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 love to do that yeah be like, yeah this is sweet let's decapitate her too yeah while she yeah <laughs> The next thing, remake somebody else's idea. They remade this movie in the 90s shot for shot, and I'm like, why? Yeah, wasn't why? Vince Vaughn in it? He was, yeah. yeah, Vince really? Vaughn was in it. And, uh, Who ended up being the bad guy? Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> Vince Vaughn's don't... always the bad guy. Was it Vince Vaughn? I, have no I don't idea. know, because Clay Pigeons came out around the same time, and I think he was the bad guy in that one. Interesting. Clay Pigeons? So yeah. said Vince Vaughn was always the bad guy in the 90s. Yeah. Remember the movie Swingers? Yeah, yes. that movie John was Favreau's so first. fucking long. I couldn't stand it. I Abby, remember watching uh, it. And I'm like, this movie never. Ends. Abby's like, I'm going to bed. I'm not. Yeah, finishing I don't this. think I ever watched. <laughs> I watched. I enjoyed I tried. it. It sounds like it was released around the same time as Showgirls. <laughs> I think I saw part of it. It's like early '90s. <laughs> Who Maybe it was Showgirls. Have you, have you seen Showgirls? Uh yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. It's fucking it's so terrible. Saved by the Bell. Yeah, the spinoff. Dude, is, wait, it's what? Wait. It's a sequel to Saved by the Bell. It's after she takes all those caffeine pills. This is yeah. what it leads wait. to. I'm so excited. Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> the best part about Showgirls is it's the same director as fucking RoboCop oh. and Total Are you fucking Recall. serious? I didn't Are know you serious? That. And... Starship Troopers, Paul Verhoeven. Well, it sounds like he should just stick to sci-fi because that's. Well, he stuck some titties, a bunch of titties, in like Starship Troopers. He's like, I'm not giving that gimmick up. I need frizzy-haired girl boots. <laughs> like, this is not going to theaters without it. He only used her one time though. It was uh Jesse, Michael Ironside? Is that his name? Oh yeah, yeah. That Paul bald, bald guy that always talks like this. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking get him. Yeah, that was uh. <laughs> The bad guy in Total Recall there. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. Hey, uh, how's the... I'll see you at the party. <laughs> <laughs> the the FYE that used to be over in the Walmart Plaza on the Vestal Parkway had a complete box set. Oh, coconuts. Coconut. Yeah, coconuts. Yeah, coconuts. Yeah, yeah. I missed that had, had a complete box set, collector's edition of the movie Showgirls with, like, tassels in it. And I was, I was oh. like 16 Are you or 17. I'm dead serious. Yeah. I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. <laughs> you bought it. I, I wanted to. It was like $200. I swear to God. It was dude, like 200 bucks. If you dude, waited like two weeks, you could have gotten that plus 10 movies for $5. <laughs> yeah. I went Fire in when sale. they closed back, you know, back all those years oh, ago. Oh, I did. I and, went, and I was like, I was looking for it. You know, the 17 year old me was like, get the, get the fucking showgirls. Get, get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't there. It was we, already gone. We used to go in there because the used DVDs were like, Buy one for a dollar, get nine free. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, so many movies. For where are DVDs now, though? At it's their a, house. Yeah. <laughs> a a media Walmart. Lots bin. of them. A I would spend like pass. 20 bucks, take home like 200 DVDs. It was great. The Walmart $5 bin. Well, we talked about this in the movie poster episode, though, like how like uh, actual painted posters and things have kind of... They're they're not really a big thing anymore. Yeah, and now it's like it's like the same thing with DVDs. Everything's streaming now. So yeah. nobody, weirdly we, enough, Drew Struzan is still well, that's still doing stuff, man. Yeah, well, I, he's like the best movie poster artist there is. is. Well, that was, was the biggest failure. He probably tried to retire, and then it was oh, like, hey, he Drew, hey, Drew, Drew, we'll give you an absurd you amount of money for this. Somebody pulls new him aside Star Wars. Con. He's like, what are you a fan? No, I'm a movie maker, and I got like fifty grand cash in my pocket. <laughs> he's like, okay, can you hit his month long deadline? Like, yeah, that's. That sounds fine. Well, that's I the totally problem. With, love money. That was the problem. Four with, weeks, I'm used to one. That was the problem with coconuts, though, is that you would go in there and buy ten DVDs for the price of one, for one dollar. But then, any DVD that you brought in there, minimum they would give you is a dollar. So you would just go outside, unwrap it, and go back in and sell them all ten DVDs back for ten bucks. Uh, a sweet business plan. Smart yeah. move. It was yeah. a good scheme. Uh, was a scheme. <laughs> Those were my first schemes. You did that with our DVDs? No, that was before. Oh, yeah, okay. I feel like posters in general, everything's been boiled down to just like icons on the fucking Netflix scrolling bar, you know? Yeah, that's all it is. It doesn't seem... 
It's kind of missed that time. And that's all just like screenshots of, from a movie now. Yeah, Never with the really logo thrown artwork, on top. You know? Even though they could you literally use the poster that some guy illustrated. Yeah. And they've like, already Man, paid for that it. That doesn't look very good, that sign. And, and they, they already paid for it, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, a shitty screenshot of one of the characters in the movie. It's a completely Making dead a th- art. Face. With the scene just slightly moving behind them. I kind of miss the fucking VHS generation. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a lot of fun just walking around a video store and being like, what the fuck is that? We, my my dad would I yell at me. I have to watch that dumb movie right now. It would take, like, when I talk about looking for porn right now, it's so difficult, like, finding the right porn. <laughs> when it was, way, and I get a complex about it, because I'm like, oh, my God, 30 minutes have gone by, and I'm not, I don't have the one porn I want to look for, and I keep looking. It's the same way when I was eight or nine years old in the movie store. Because it was like, I'm looking at movies, I'm looking at movies, and my parents are like, we got to go. And I'm like, but I don't know what to get. Look at all of these movies. There's like the, that that what is that blockbuster thing? was too big. There was too it was, many. It was too many. But like, what's that thing called where you go to a restaurant and the menu is so big and you just get so f- overflow, you get flustered by. You're just like I will have. There's the a term. Yeah, yeah. But there's a term. You for always that end up with thing. chicken fingers. Some kind of phobia of it's giant like, menus. It's, no, it's, it's the same thing with like there's too much. <laughs> Unable to decide. Yeah, yeah. You go into a blockbuster, indecisive, or, indecisive. or Video choices. King, and you're just like. What do I get? They don't have the movie I came here for. Right. That's when you just end up with mozzarella sticks or chicken fingers. Did you ever end up with like a movie that really sucked though? Because all the, the time. cover looked cool. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Anime section at Front Street in Binghamton. Yeah, like oh, this looks awesome. I was like, wait, that Video was like- King. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did I say? Anime King. <laughs> no, you oh. said anime, anime, anime section, section, but oh. I think that was the one. Video King, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always used to Plus get Voltron. King. I used to rent Voltron over and over again. And it was the same movie where the five cats were trying, no, the f- four, of the, four of the five cats were trying to form Voltron. Uh-huh. And they're like, well, it's not going to work. And I'm even, you know, six-year-old, seven-year-old <gasps> me goes, it's not going to work. No. You can't do it. What are they going to have, Voltron? Uh, with one I have one <laughs> trapped under a thing. And it's like, how do we fix the thing? <laughs> well, that's it. By the way, guys, those and chains are sweet. And thank I'm you, I'm thank you, my best friend. Is that real money. gold? I'm really sweaty. It's probably yeah, I'm sorry. really sweaty gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. Anyway. It definitely could please the Italian landlord look that you got going on today. Yeah, I'm offended by that. Well, <laughs> you turned cockney when you got yours. Oh yeah, yeah. I went back this because we were talking about soul bass. It's all fun <laughs> bass, bro. Back in the fucking DJ years, you know what I mean? Getting that PA system that somebody's fucking working on. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna pack this one up to like eleven. I don't know anything you just said. Can we do a whole <laughs> eleven, bro? Podcast of you in that voice. Yeah, it's called the Mad Donks Cheese Off. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of me are two wolves. On that note, one I, of them, I think is this retarded. is going to be the shortest episode ever. <laughs> and the other one's retarded, also. That's not that two short. Wolves. I think we got a half hour. <laughs> Does anybody else have any movie posters that stick out? We talked about Frank Z- Frazetta had a short career in the fifties working there. Yeah. And then Drew Struzan a little while through seventies through the eighties. I mean, stuff. we looked at all the the good ones in the movie poster episode. Go check that out. It's on YouTube. Really like the Drew Struzan Pan's Labyrinth one that was ever used. That was great. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that one's oh yeah, all the stuff he did for Hellboy. Like, what Tomorrow? about the uh, the Drew Struzan signed poster that's out at your station? Yeah, I have one of those too for being human. Yeah. Cool, tight. Drew's awesome. Check him out. Saul Vass is pretty awesome too. Yeah. I, I, I like I it. like his work a lot. Even how minimalistic it is. Like, yeah. I'm still okay with it. Should we do an episode not on mad just at it. Uh, isolate typography? Maybe Ooh. talk about there's any... Fuck oh, yes. or the fucking Bauhaus movement in the 50s, 40s, I would 50s. <laughs> I want to talk about... This German design school from the 40s. It's fucking great. How Futura was the best was the most perfect font until Helvetica came out. Until Wingdings came out. No, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> or Alien sized Wingdings. Have you ever watched that SNL skit where the dude is just so broken about how great of a movie Avatar was, but why did they use Papyrus? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It's true. You're looking at that, you're like, as a graphic artist that knows font, you're like, why the fuck would they use Papyrus? Okay. <laughs> Another modern one. Bank Note Gothic. Make no gothic. Yeah, I know. Copper plate. Copper well. plate. Those are the two that I always uh, use. B- Bleeding Cowboys was the one font that oh, burned fuck. out so fast. I could do a whole podcast about this font Bleeding and Cowboys. how how it burned. It was so fast. Typewriter with splatters, but Chopin style curly cues. Yes. yes, Levi bought the font. 
Levi? Levi's uses the font now on their jeans. Yeah. Bleeding oh. Cowboys was the one font that came out and I was like, wow, this is unique. And then literally two weeks later, everyone was using it. And then like a month later, Levi's started using the font. I was like, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> how did that font, how, how did that happen? And it was a font that someone released on Defont for free. Yep. And then all of a sudden people started using Levi's like, we want that font. That's our font. That's why you don't market Every time free. I feel, feel like that font, just those stickers that are like, I'm 48% princess. Yes. 52% bitch. You decide which side you want to meet. Fuck. 100% generic. <laughs> Bleeding cowboys. Zappafinos. Apple Chancery are all the fonts. Well, Zappafinos and Apple Chancery are fonts that people use. Everyone's like, what the fuck is he I know doing? exactly what you're talking about. They're the fonts that everyone uses. I browse the font on library weddings, in Photoshop. On wedding <laughs> invitations. And you're like, what? Just use Times New. Don't even use, use Bodoni. You want something classy? Use Bodoni. Bodoni? Or Century. Okay. You well, use those two fonts for something classy. What about a nice Courier New? Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with Courier New. A little, yeah, sure. Okay. Did. Little typography little. at BU, we had to do the first 70% of our projects, like the first two months, we had to do exclusively in Times. Who was your teacher at Bedoni. BU? I forget right now. Okay. Was he a bald-headed guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bit of hair over yeah, 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 yeah. He ran Pear Designs. Uh, Mike and Chucky... Wesco. Wet, I was going to say yeah. Weston, but yeah, yeah Wesco. Yeah, like I did Wesco. the same class. Yeah. And they said five fonts. It was Bodoni, Century. But toward the end, you got to use Helvetica. You got to use Helvetica. <laughs> you had to work this, your way up to that. This dude, Helvetica. seriously, man. <laughs> they made you work in Garamond, yes. Bodoni, and Times. Baskerville. Like, and he had Baskerville. Baskerville. All default yeah, windows. Baskerville. Yeah. All, so you only could Just use those basic. on any of your And then we talked about graphics. the history of Forum, that they were carved out in, like, the fucking 1700s. Oh. Like, actually, Bedoni is Italian from, like, the 1750s, <laughs> where, like, Baskerville is French from, like, the 1740s, and then you have... Fucking font nerds. He, he <laughs> threw a student out for using uh, uh, Apple Chancery. He th- <laughs> he's like, get out of my class. How dare you, sir? <laughs> and when he, he had this guy, this teacher had a hard on. I love the teacher, great teacher. He had a hard on for Helvetica. He made us watch the Helvetica documentary. Oh, I was going to bring that up earlier. <laughs> okay. he made us How the some, dude opens when he's like carving. A documentary about a font. It's yeah. amazing. It's, it's really good. Cool. It's really good. It, it opens <laughs> up with this guy who's like literally carving typefaces, you know, in his like little workshop, and he's just got blocks of metal, uh-huh. and he's fucking just doing it by hand. And then just sets up a print and then, like, rolls it, shows you, like, the whole process. And then that's what they use for the title card of the movie. And you're like, Jesus, where are we going with this? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, just graphic design nerds just, like, for, like, a 30, 90 minutes. And they're just talking about how great Helvetica font is and how it's the, it's the how perfect Helvetica font. Helvetica gets their dick hard. It's the perfect font. Oh it, there's nothing wrong with Helvetica. <laughs> At all. You don't even have to kern it. You don't have to do the spacings in between the letters. It is the most perfect font that anybody could use. And then, you know, AM- MTV thought they were really cool. And they were like, we're going to alter Helvetica because it's not perfect. So they came out with a font called Coolvetica. Uh, it's just. When it's, was it? When, when, was the, when was the font? Was it to like advertise for Jersey Shore? Like, <laughs> oh, what no, time no. period of MTV we were no, talking about? We, uh, we, like, we need to do an entire episode on fonts now. Uh, MTV, was- we could. Reggie, obviously, I didn't know Reggie was a font guy and took the class. I, holy shit. The, the, it came out, this was like in 2004 to 2010. Okay. So it was, it was like on every one of their commercials where they had like MTV. It was just like the, the commercial with the black on the side and it was like talking about tune in tonight at eight o'clock. And watch oh, yeah. Teen like, Mom 2. Like or what the fuck MTV was it? MTV 2. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. TV, real life. Watches this girl huffs duster instead of air. <laughs> <laughs> Walking on sunshine, girl? Oh, my God. I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> it was beautiful. Oh, oh my God. Right, well, Get me hard on fucking fonts. Now that we filled the last 10 minutes of the podcast <laughs> talking about fucking fonts, we're going to do an entire episode on fonts We are fonts doing now. yes. We have to do yes. that. But... Documentary it, review on Helvetica. Oh, we've already seen it. All yeah. right, I'll so, have to check it out because it sounds interesting. Like these Is it made by assholes. the same guy that made like Weekend at Bernie's? That's how That's I thunder. judge movies. Thunder. <laughs> that was th- <laughs> We're in a massive storm right now. Thunder buddies. 
Oh yeah, Thunder Buddies. New beer releasing tomorrow from uh, thunder- North. Oh, it's thundering shit. right now. And it's from uh, Beer Tree in the North Brewery. It's our collab. Beer Tree is over in Port Crane and Johnson City at uh, both their locations in the North Brewery. We came together for one beer. It's pretty good. Thank I must you. say. Thank you. I think that does it for today, guys. Out Closing tomorrow. Words. Huh? Oh, it comes out tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. The beer. So come get drunk tomorrow. Tomorrow would be Wednesday. So, so it comes come out get, in the past. Yes. So come get drunk yesterday. Yeah, yeah, please. Please come down. We might still have some. Time travel. Pick up Da Vinci on the way. On your TikTok time travel. We'll see you TikTok next week. TikTok time travel. Nice one, bro. Next week or the week after, whatever. <laughs> Bye. I sweated so much. <laughs> You took the font with, with Mike and Chucky Wesco? Well, mostly Mike. Chucky's so sweaty. But holy shit. <laughs> Talk about font.